Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I'm sharing an interactive pop-up card with the new Cloudy Hillside add-on dies. They work with the Stitched Hillside pop-up. There's lots of add-ons for this particular die, which makes creating a pop-up element inside your card so fantastic. The clouds are so fun. I am always a huge fan of clouds because I think they add so much to a design. And today we're gonna share this card featuring kind of our friendship is written in the stars that uses the upon a star stamp set with these clouds and I'm also going to share an idea for using the cloudy hillside pop-up dies not only for the pop-up inside the card but as the borders on the front of the card so if you don't want to use them for pop-up or if you want to use them in conjunction with the pop-up you can do that both ways I'm going to use my misty to kind of uh, lay out and stamp the um, constellations from the Upon a Star stamp set. I'm going to lay them out as many as I can get with one um, press of the Misty at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and do this first one and I'm going to actually be doing two panels. These panels were die cut using a small stitched rectangle die, the largest in that small die set from the Lawn Vaughn Blue Jay cardstock. And I'm doing two at a time because I want one for the front of the card and a matching one for the inside of the card. You could mix them up if you wanted to, but really a time saver for me was to stamp them exactly the same. I'm using that powder tool before I stamp them so that the images, um, or the embossing powder rather, doesn't kind of migrate all over the card and hopefully sticks just to the stamped area. I'm using the Lawn Fawn White Embossing Powder, which is my favorite. It is pure white, so great, and really adds a beautiful contrast to this Blue Jay cardstock. I went with Blue Jay for a more um, nighttime feel, but I didn't really wanna use black. And for this particular card, I didn't really wanna do a whole bunch of inking. I wanted this to be about as simple as you could get. And the Blue Jay cardstock is fantastic for that. To add to the night sky, I'll show you some inking we're gonna do here in just a second. I'm moving my stamps around, just filling in this entire background. I've got a couple more little areas to add to. You can see I'm doing them both at the same time. And then I'm going to just take an acrylic block and add this little trio of stars throughout the design. I am going to mention real quick, there is this trio that has the open stars and then there's a trio of solid stars. I could not find my solid stars stamp. I know you guys are probably all laughing because you can see my stamp set to the right of the screen. It was stuck to the backing paper flipped up. How I didn't see it, I don't know. I originally wanted to use the solid stars, not the open ones. And it wasn't until right now that I realized where it was. So kind of just one of those duh, slap yourself in the forehead moments, but that's okay, the open stars is fine. We're gonna take the Yeti White Pigment Ink now in a foam ink blending tool, and I'm applying this pigment ink around the top area of my background. And it's really adds this kind of cloudy feel but if you take and use a dry rag or dry paper towel like I'm using here and kind of rub off any of that excess ink from the stamped areas especially, it really softens the effect, but it softens the blue background and I think it adds to that magical um, starry night feel that I was looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lay out everything real quick and make sure that I like how it all looks. And then we're going to go ahead and start stamping some of our images and things that we're gonna use for the card. I wanted more than the Fox images from the Upon a Star stamp set. Um, I didn't really want to combine the bunnies and the foxes. I Just for whatever reason, I really wanted to just go with the foxes for this particular card. So I looked through my Lawn Fawn collection and decided to go with the foxes from the Mom Plus Me stamp set because I think scale-wise and design-wise, they complement and coordinate perfectly with the Upon a Star fox images. They're just front-facing instead of back-facing. So for the front of the card, we're actually gonna have three of the back-facing foxes. I'll stamp two of the smaller one and then one of the large. And on the inside of the card, we're gonna have the individual fox image, the, the small fox, 
and then the fox with the little baby one kind of wrapped up in its tail. So each of the um, panels, the front and the inside, are each going to feature three images, if that makes sense. And I really like how they coordinate so well together. All the foxes are going to be colored exactly the same. I'm only going to show coloring a couple of them just to save time in the video. The majority of the fox body is E089 and E59, which I really kind of had to work to find the right dark color to add that perfect shading. And I think the E59 does that. Then for the tip of the tail and any light areas like on the faces or the insides of the ears, this is going to be E21 and E11. And that'll give a nice contrast, but still add a cute little pop of color. Once the coloring is done and all the shading is done, I did take my darkest color, that E59, and add a little dotted detail to the foxes to add just interest and really give them a little bit added dimension. But other than that, they're all colored exactly the same. Once I have that done, I'm gonna take the coordinating Mom Plus Me and Upon a Star dies and die cut them. And I'm going to stamp the stars from Upon a Star plus that little shooting star image on the rest of my paper. And I need to do this twice. I'm actually going to need six stars per panel. Six for the front, six for the inside. Going to have the exact same thing. I'm just going to put them in different orders on the inside. Mix it up a little bit that way. But then color them in rainbow colors. So we're going to have reds, R27 and R46. For the orange, YR04 and 09, Y08 and 19 for yellow. And then I don't think I shared it on screen, but it's YG01 or YG21 and 17 for green, B01 and 4 for blue, and B60 and 63 for the purple. And just using two colors, two shades per color family to color those all in, and die cutting all of the stars with the coordinating upon a star dies pop all these out and we can start putting everything together now. The front panel and the inside. Now along that bottom front cloud border, I need to start my greeting with our friendship is written in the dot dot dot. And I'm going to stamp that with black ink right along that bottom edge. I'm going to use a pen to make the little dots. This is one of my favorite things is when a sentiment starts on the front of the card and finishes on the inside. So we'll finish that here in just a second when we get to there. We're going to center our background panel on the front. It is slightly smaller because we used a small stitched rectangle die. If you want that to completely cover the front of the design, make sure and use the large stitched rectangle dies. And then for the cloudy pop-up borders, because we're not using them as a pop-up on the front of the card, you want to make sure you tuck that back one down far enough or use something else to disguise it for that little notch cutout part, which is really easy to do. And then I've got my foxes tucked some behind and some in front of the clouds, adding a black gel pen for the noses on the back facing foxes. When we get to the front facing ones, we'll need to add detail to eyes and noses for some of them. And then let's add those stars to the front. Um, for the most part, I covered up a star in the constellations with one of these colored stars, but you could do it however you want to do. I'm gonna fold that in half, use a Teflon bone folder to get a really nice crease, and then let's go ahead and start on the inside. On that inside front panel, we want to add our other background that we've created. And then we're gonna take the stitched hillside pop-up and bend back that back portion. I always like to use a Teflon bone folder here to get really good creases. And then simply fold up the stitched hillside pop-up so that it's gonna pop up correctly. And I, again, like to use my bone folder for all of this as well. Nice, strong adhesive on that bottom panel. I like to start there first. This goes on the inside part. We're gonna fold it all down now, fold it up, add nice, strong adhesive just to the little tab because this is what's gonna connect to the background. 
and I decided that probably wasn't good enough. I went ahead and used some glue dots as well. Then I like to fold that all down, fold my card shut, and that is going to adhere those little pop-up areas right in the perfect place. Once I have my inside panel, you could do this before. Um, I probably should have, it's a little bit easier, but I went ahead and stamped the word stars. Because of all the different greetings in Upon a Star, the S is a separate piece that you can stamp because it. some of the words need the plural, plural, some do not. So you can use it either way, which is fantastic. And then I added some little dots before that as well. Now I'm going to adhere these to the pop-up. I really probably should have done this before. It would be so much easier and I apologize. My head completely got in the way because I needed to line these up but I did not, so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these now, but they just simply cover up those panels on the card. Isn't that so cool? There is grass, there's some houses, there's waves. Um, Lawn Fawn has lots of fantastic add-ons for this particular die, so you can make cards for any occasion, and it's really awesome. Again, adding my black gel pen to the nose and eyes, depending on the image. And then I can adhere these cute little guys to the inside of my card, to the different layers of the pop-up. We're gonna have a couple on the front one and one on the back. And then we wanna add all of our stars to the sky on the inside as well. So we'll start with these little guys. And you wanna hide your adhesive and make sure the adhesive is only on the part of whatever you're adding to these layers that's going to be attached to, in this instance, the, the cloud. Otherwise, it's going to stick to the inside of your card. So make sure when you're putting your adhesive on these images that it is just on the area that is adhered to the border. So for these, just kind of on the bottom half. And there's what it looks like when it's all popped up. Now I need to go ahead and embellish my stars. And a lot of times I use the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen, but I have found that sometimes it doesn't add as much sparkle and shimmer as I want. And kind of by a happy accident here a few weeks ago, I was doing a card with bumblebees and I added some white blizzard Nuvo crystal drops to them. And it didn't take away from the color, but instead it added these awesome sparkly looking wings and I loved it. So instead of anything else, but I still want a glitter feel to these stars, I'm just putting a thin layer of the white blizzard Nuvo crystal drops all over my stars and then adding some additional little drops of this all over the sky. This is a translucent color with glitter in it, meaning as these dry, like the drops right now, you can really see them on the background. Once dry, at the end of the video, be sure to check out these little drops because when they're dry, they're translucent sparkles in the sky and not these kind of white drops everywhere, which really looks awesome. Plus the color, the rainbow color of the colored stars shows up, but they're beautiful and sparkly. Um, so they're not covered up either. I just love this about the White Blizzard Nouveau Crystal Drops. It has quickly become one of my favorites just because if you want a nice amount of sparkle over something, this is a fantastic product to create that. So there's the inside, or the front rather, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the inside of the card. The only thing is because Nouveau Crystal Drops take a little bit to dry, you're gonna want to let that dry probably for a couple hours before you do the inside of the card. And I definitely wanted my inside to match the outside of the card with the sparkles, with the drops and all of that. So I did the card, I left and had other things to do for a couple hours, worked on some other projects, came back and added sparkles to the inside. And again, you're gonna to wanna to leave your card open and let this dry for a couple hours. Let the whole card dry for a good 24 hours before putting it in, in an envelope and mailing it out. Thanks for joining me today for this interactive pop-up card featuring the Lawn Fawn 
Stitched Hillside Cloud Pop-Up Dies. The supplies I used to create this card are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring lawn fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.